Du isch so es egal, ich's tock da gu. Na pigost gilt no skaik. Ha kiert en miele chiele stut nach chieper us of war. Ha fat si hule seitles ru, se wohl is teine trai. Ha nun de hiert en keint nun krug und jetzt doch us gut pass. That's the verse from a song by Neil MacLeod, the Sky Bard, made late last century. It is called Will Gaelic Die? Addressing the language, the poet asks it to reawaken, raise its voice, showing no fear or reluctance, for hundreds of thousands are committed to it and will not let it die. Hundreds of thousands, as we shall see, makes too high a figure now, literally at any rate. Yet it is true to say that hundreds of thousands of people in Scotland and elsewhere now have a feeling of goodwill towards Gaelic and would not be happy if it ever died. We are thinking of that wider audience in putting this programme together. Gaelic Scotland may be thought of in about the 4th century AD, that is, some 1600 years ago. But what Gaelic colonies there were became strongly reinforced in the 5th century when Dalriada, in the central and southwestern areas of Argyll, was settled. These Gaelic-speaking settlers crossed over from Ireland, where they had been settled for several centuries. Some may have crossed to Galloway then, too, for the sea channels between Ireland are very narrow at the Rins of Galloway and at the Mull of Kintyre, only 14 miles at the Mull. A little later, about the middle of the 6th century, mm -hmm. Iona had become the chief religious centre of Dalrieda, and Columba, who was of royal blood, came there as abbot, and using Iona as his base, and Dalrieda in general as a larger power base, he extended the influence of the Gaelic Christian Church to the more easterly and northerly parts of Scotland, which were at that time controlled by the Picts. Thus, it was probably by this process that the Gaelic language first began to take hold in central and eastern and northern Scotland as a prestige language, the language associated with the new religion. Of course, that new religion had come to the Gaels originally through Latin-speaking missionaries as part of the Roman Empire's expansion. But it had been acclimatised in the Gallic world, which in its turn produced its own missionaries. Columba and his successors in Scotland must have had considerable prestige as representatives of a powerful and well-organised international religious body. And since Gallic was from early times brought into service in this organisation, it had great prestige also. Religious foundations, such as Iona, also played a highly important part in the fostering of the arts, as, for example, the arts of poetry, manuscript illumination, sculpture, architecture and silverwork. At this point we should look back very briefly and see where this language Gallic came from in the period before the 4th century AD and who or what its linguistic relatives were. At this time, and for some centuries afterwards, the forms of Gaelic spoken in Scotland and Ireland were virtually the same, and it is proper enough to refer to all the varieties as Gaelic. It is only later that the variations become so great that we are forced to distinguish them as Scottish and Irish Gaelic. Gaelic was one of the main branches of the Celtic family of languages, and for the last 2,000 years or so, it has been spoken in Ireland, Scotland and the Isle of Man, with a notable modern colony in Nova Scotia. The other main branch of the Celtic language family is that called the Brythonic or British branch. In modern times, it survives in the forms of Welsh and Breton, spoken in Brittany. Cornish also belonged to this branch, but it is now extinct, except in an artificially revived form. Forms of Welsh or British were formerly spoken in many parts of England and Scotland. For example, in Cumberland and in Strathclyde and in the small British kingdoms in central Scotland. Some of these British or Welsh dialects or languages survived quite late, probably until the 11th century AD in Scotland. And there was yet another Celtic language, or language that was partly Celtic, spoken in Scotland, namely Pictish. It was more closely related to Welsh and Breton than to Gaelic. It was spoken mainly to the north of the Firth of Forth 
and especially in the east and in the northeast. Many traces of the other Celtic languages still survive, especially in place names. Here are a few examples of these with the Celtic elements emphasised in the pronunciation. One from British. Perth, Kincardine, Strathpeffer, Aberdeen, Edinburgh, Pennycook, Lanark, Echelfeche. Secondly, from Pictish, the large series of names containing in some form the Pictish element pit, probably referring to a small portion of Arab land. Pitlochri, Pitodri, Pittenween, Petty. But Gaelic names are thick on the ground almost all over Scotland, however much they may have become disguised in later centuries. Half the name in a number of the instances you have just heard is Gaelic, as in Kincardine, Strathpeffer, Aberdeen, Pitlochri. Edinburgh has its Gaelic equivalent, Dunedin, which appears as Dunedin in New Zealand. Wander across the map of Scotland from south to north, from east to west, and it is full of Gaelic names. Carrick, Dalry, Kilmarnock, Larks, Cumbernauld, Kilbride, Dunfermline, Braemar, Elgin. Or look more closely at the local names in and around Glasgow, and you will find Gaelic footprints all around you. Govan, Yoker, Shettleston, Inchinnan, Mahego, Dumbarton, Baloch, and so on. In the 16 centuries or so, since Gaelic became part of the Scottish scene, its fortunes have fluctuated greatly. We can envisage a long period of steady build-up in the early centuries, and this is the process that we see enshrined in all these place names. As part of this process, we find the kingdoms of the Picts and the Scots uniting and coalescing in the mid-9th century and a Gallic dynasty eventually coming to rule the whole of Scotland. The Scots were, in fact, the Gallic-speaking Dalriadic settlers, and as a symbol of their pervading influence, the whole country came to be called their land, Scotland. Gaelic continued to be spoken in many parts of Scotland until quite modern times, in parts of Ayrshire and Galloway until the 17th century, around Loch Lomond until the 19th and early 20th century. So too in the greater part of Perthshire and in Speyside, in Donside until the early part of this century in a few cases, and in Upper Deeside until after the last war. There are still pockets of Gaelic speech in the easterly parts of the country, from East Perthshire through Invernessshire and up the east coast from Inverness to Caithness. But the main areas of Gaelic speech are now in the west and predominantly in the islands. In the Outer Isles, Gaelic is still very much an everyday language, although the flood of English television in particular is badly undermining its use among younger people. In the last ten years, never in the last two or three, there has been a great revival of interest in the Gaelic language and in many other Gaelic matters. Songs, history, poetry and so on. There are Gaelic classes all over the country and indeed in many places abroad. Gaelic poetry is frequently read at public readings. There is a large audience for Gaelic music, whether on TV, radio or on records and cassettes. Gaelic is undoubtedly popular in a sense it has not been for a long time, and it seems likely that this new interest is here to stay.
Flodden. To fight the Saxons is right, no rising followed by flight. Edge of sword, point of spear, let us ply them with good cheer. Against Saxons, I say to you, lest they rule our country too, fight roughly like the Irish gale, we will have no English pale. Destroy the roots from which they grow, too great their increase, and lay low each Saxon, robbing him of life, give the same treatment to his wife. Burn their women, coarse, untrue. Burn their uncouth children too. And burn down their black houses. Rid us of their grouses. Send their ashes down the flood when you've burnt their flesh and blood. Show no rue to living Saxon. Death dealing, salmon hero, tax them. Remember, cheek of raspberry hue, that Saxons lorded over you. Keep in memory their spite as Saxon power has grown in might. Since of the gale there now remain but scant survivors of the slain, together gather all your men, strike fear into the foe again. Attack the Saxons in their land, awake, Macallan, understand, O golden-haired one, that a fighter profits much by sleeping lighter. <laughs>
دو خاشی که می نایی که یس نمایی چند پوایی که خی می کارس نایی می لانسن چیرس که می یالخ سنو درانی می باله خرو آیر نکیالم فنم نانجی فویلس فنم کروکی کن برانخ سوام خرو و تیر اخ نشین اخ سن چامر سی نشین فنونگ سخلونی مخارگ فتالت Maar in die hen was een kindje in zijn jaren, door de goede kieren zat de gietje via waarheid. Hier groei ik een zoel, kom ik een aaskarig, kom kiel van mijn sklikjes, kus een jikke kamiarig. Sun bursting goldenly from its meshing. The sky became scorched and gloomy, awe-inspiring. The waves grew dark, thick, dun-bellied, angry and sallow. The sky had every single hue you find in Tartan. A dog's tooth appeared in the west, a storm threatened. Swift-moving clouds by wind shredded. Squally showers, too. They hoisted the sails, speckled, towering, close-woven. They stretched the ropes, stiff, tough and taut, to the long, tall masts, red, resined, pointed. They were tied in trusty knots, efficiently, through the eyes of iron hooks 
and round ring bolts. They adjusted every bit of gear, smartly, neatly. Each man sat ready to watch his own portion. The windows of the heavens opened, dark grey, spotted, to let the rough wind blow through them in fierce anger. When we fell down from the tops of the shaggy billows, the heel of the ship just about gored the shelly sea floor. The ocean was churned and dashed against itself. The seals and other great creatures were in dire straits. The roaring and rage of the ocean, the ship in its movement, dashing the white of their brains through the billows. As they howled in horror and dread and bitter sorrow, we are the underdogs here, let us aboard you. All the small fish in the sea had their white bellies upwards, killed by the raging storm in their thousands. Surfacing stones and shellfish from the seabed were torn up by the pounding of haughty ocean. The whole sea turned to porridge, foul and turbid, with the blood and filth of splayed sea beasts turned red and horrid. Creatures with horns and talons, flippers, splay feet, many headed, howling from wide jaws, their mouths gaping. The deep all full of goblins with paws weaving, a crawl with claws and tails of great monsters. But when the ocean failed to win from us surrender, she took pity and smiled wanly, making peace with us. There was not a mast unbent, a sail not tattered, a yard arm fast, a yard ring whole, an oar undamaged. The tiller was split badly, the rudder shattered, Every plank groaned and creaked, being cracked and split. The galley of Clanranald eventually got home safely to harbour, and this is how Mac Vanster Alistair tells about the final stages of the journey in the original Gaelic. Garum and Naraike, she hive runya, it crush who leela, Gundur Garavu, Herav Gloroch. Or to Shini. Hoki oin to in the Vuach Krochnar is Hini going a clar re mean yav and jay a tavin. Hokshin Puyahus on the archery, hum natulen, Jo Hondro Livisavalch of vas brujal. And shin Vem shin shul hana, Valoch, hulin, is lection a crying vein yarak gast er fat hurlar. Kurshinimach, Rive, Hul, Vashkamp, Gach, Vina, Jenny Yus, the Voin Machvarash, in Yelaninan. Ranchin in Himmerig, Re, Tulukanoch, Gunjaramut, is Gafshin Jo, Longforst, Ek Barov, Harakaradish. Hilikshin Achrichin, Gesocher, and some Rodshin. Gafshin Bilg, is Joch, Gunarkis, is Ranchin Kony. Who in Yoro, Karam 
In his great house I have been joyful, dancing merry on a wide floor, the fiddle playing to put me to sleep, the pipe playing to wake me in the morning, bear my greeting to Dunvegan. And it was only a few years later that the pibroch whose ground you are to hear was composed. It is introduced and played by Pipe Major Donald MacLeod. Pibroch, the grander theme of Lament for Donald of Lagan. Donald of Lagan was born in 1543, succeeded to Glengarry in 1574, and died aged 102 on the 2nd of February 1645, the day of the Battle of Inverlochy. In an old Mackenzie manuscript, he is accused of idolatry. An action was raised against him in Edinburgh, in which it was alleged that he had a painter in Loch Carran, which he then owned, painting images, and that he worshipped the image of St. Con, called in Edinburgh Glengarry's God. The composer of the lament was Patrick Moore Macremon. The jig which follows is called the Glasgow Police Pipers, and although it requires a lot of digital dexterity, it is essentially a fun tune. Uh <laughs>
Apanje kruiek morak vek, apanje kruiek morak, apanje kruiek morak vek, zamišerus klonen. Apanje kruiek morak vek, apanje kruiek morak, apanje kruiek morak vek, zamišerus klonen. Amišerus klonen, doj amišerus klonen, amišerus klonen, doj apanje kruiek morak, amišerus klonen, doj amiš. Amišerus kvonen, amišerus kvonen, doj za panje hrujek morak. Jult batoh fatrgas, kan jult batoh fjerga, kan jult batoh fatrga, horin familiesic. Jult batoh fatrgas, kan jult batoh fjerga, kan jult batoh fatrga, horin familiesic. Jult batoh fatrgas, kan jult batoh fjerga, jult batoh fatrgas, kan jult batoh fjerga, jult batoh fatrgas, kan jult batoh fjerga, 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 kan Khornjere fiper fiper fiper, khornjere fiper me hendol tulas, khornjere fiper fiper fiper, khornjere fiper me hendol tulas, khornjere nile re nile re nile, khornjere nile sri shen drumbi, khornjere nile re nile re nile, khornjere nile sri shen drumbi, khornjere fiper fiper fiper, khornjere fiper me hendol tulas, khornjere fiper fiper fiper, khornjere fiper me hendol tulas, khornjere nile re nile re nile, khornjere nile sri shen drumbi, khornjere nile re nile. Nile, 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 Nile
where he mourns the clearances that took place there. And John Smith does the same for 19th century Lewis. They handed over to the snipe land of happy folk. They dealt without humanity with people who were kind. Because they might not drown them, they dispersed them overseas. A thraldom worse than Babylon's was the plight that they were in. Am fach gatui yw ich fôr rys yn apra'r un fach ie. Am fach gwa cola set o'r hiol rys dri yn ien lys ien. Yn cola o'ch ddes yn yr y dreim, ffalus siaraf er malus grwy. Zafias chdia trawm er cwl y cyn chrwb dje foch grwy. Chanach gatui fych gynt hwyr rys yn apra'r un y glor. Y mis cyn yn cladoch caroch siar fo alas clia fo loin. Yn charoch sio, ag ys sio chai, sgach fichet garoch fo yn tŵs, har yn nisio niem yn ŵr, chwn bieg y clain ys dŵr sy'n tŵr. 
Skach fichet voor haar triel, Geili saure poen en bla. Es roon du gosnig en klaas, Tas in mien het jyle klaar. Ek is lawe tekle schuif, Moes dat geiltje aan hem rooi. Ek is lik en kosnig tjeen, Een korp kusaaf gergoei en hooi. Is heel de tjie, maar nie toe het droog toe die vaartig bocht. Wie aan liesjen toe gasne krooi, is glas de kattel zoen en nacht. An extract from George Campbell Hayes' Our Black Caha, Our Field of Battle. Who has stayed to listen to the wind of the oceans as it sings its lonely song in the rushes of the furrows? The ploughman is beyond the oceans, winning life from the gloom of the age-old forest. The house that was warm and hospitable is roofless, and the wind and the rain are guesting in. The township is cold and quiet as the grave, and as people are on the cold waves of the world, Opening with the key of necessity the door of the birth chamber of every wind, sowing and harvesting, battle and buying on the threshold of the birth chamber of every wind. Our blood flows in the roar of the battlefields, our sweat flows in the silent woods. There is a lodestone in every earth for us, while our mother is left despised. Dying as we strike fierce blows on the far off rim of the world, without a word or a blow to help her in our pitiful condition. It is time for us to cease from far off battles, to turn our back to the western sea and our face to the bonny land that our fathers entrusted to us from God. Scotland is our lodestone, Scotland is our field of battle. It is she that our sweat will water. It is she that the heat of our blood will warm. There is room for every quality that is ours in her glens and her cities. There is a need for thought and courage between the threshold and the end of the township. Kwanyin eskatan, le roedi machkomaj. Ngara, Mar grachtig aan salen kan rasig van bial. De saal is een pechke leden tegen. Ze nemen meer een kruinje, kurrit, een genig gelach. No hoge glenef, gesochker, kummer, schesker, vallen, gen werach. Ze nemen zoelen, gotoin, rivia. Bepunus kion de hecht riegakat, nan raalen, ik kura den kuchtoch. Haus of us, seth gautoch, xen sassin, beheiltjen doosje harat as ne meeltjen varrenjenot, gune marre, gear, even krachken, is jaloch a wachken, nan kistje, is marre bengare, huletu, grond heet, brischje. Ach, wa krachtje gaan oelje, even krie, gachom al fallen, is werig kuchta ken hege, schlischen, a fanat nen gaul. Ergens waar op er nog behaast, naar jou gaat gachie, gaat nog bij mijnjak. Je doeitje, rappig, jouwri, maar wat je dan aan gaat, je ne gaat teunje. Dat gaan we er nog, laat je het maar gegooien. Houd ze niet klusje keesjak, er wijn kwee gaasje, die breren van een gelachtjet of leren. Samish nam hu yu sho a skriwa na fachil hiarapais. Gynis na nyidin a vya kwa yoch na minchin. Ach yun tia chi na minchin, usa na thuyer bialo kupin, na t'at gui himpli, na t'achote du kujok, s na t'avrokin a chosich imis raad fwolat. Chab e skala du na t'la, Sime maat in je skuiltje skatten, swat al waan gorstle salen. Ze gui jaar er uit te skinnen, staat ek een rootle tjene. Ha gole tussen moe je een jaarwen, no ruit, no varks, no nieuwe gele einste in de genien genialen. 
Na kiol a vrua ter a vrua te hus u nreis na trum na tiang hato. Ha kuolo tu mar heikis na reilten mar vaun ri in kuin tra na speren. Sa kuolo tu mar heikis in lion le kiang para pe ke vartling. Ha siutun shin er pialo kuping sniu na tu na rak imaguni. Sma vida se minis te le vai vas pitala ke gilia ne tinchin. Cain hier du er leigen ele, scharam und gottid auch die Schäfelheit. Saure gedorstig zu mich leglich, fanjor is tschistenes, rosen a fosklig saure mar ur wiebel nach der Keine. Es kein ich du er immer bass, es immer lach ei fass. Uwe da dans der Ballach in a tschickig der Höhl guich an. Gusser er wich der Höhl gemalat, du nischt er der Liegachi, tra ratschen gelf, mar inchen dünne Fosskiltle ordne skinne. Spallich nen schessen an gütsch eiretsch skruten janioch, skiare chaul da trucht se falla, gün aramoch, tasch in stratsch luske mit der Chassen, gün aramoch, ach der Spirit kort an ach der Chussöhl ria van Orte. Ach, kommest du, mein Ochus, slan nat neuchente, mar chot. Laaf heile, le dol mach kaulai. Hig at a noas as ne kreich, de marscht, de hönje, tuha noch et asel, as trus nien, krubje, fochlea, vis jaschmak. Bi luchke valle, de jing hom at konlug as messen, as schied an ad, in the face, so that they can see the rest. So if you're going to go to Ankara, and you have to go to the house, and you're going to go to the house, and you're going to go to the house. And you're going to go to the house, and you're going to go to the house, and you're going to go to the house. And you're going to go to the house, and you're going to go to the house, and you're going to go to the house, Sul ma chompa noch. E gilles na rean Bauri hasin Eges ankara Sambale Dai noch e hes chavor Chofate Rish na kreich Von ich imi E na straten in hes la Lorocken Sind ustlich Daus Kem grein E ke kasen lume Von e fleigen du Sku echtrig an gloset Sul vio e fev for her is jalloch, geid ull mo hege gjalvar, skruien mar fama granet. This program was devised, written and presented by Derek Thompson. It was produced by George Philp and Alan Ramsey for Scotch in Productions, with the support of the Gaelic Books Council.